Welcome back to another clay video. Today we are going to create Esther Winchester from Cuphead, the delicious last course. This was the most requested boss in the comments of my other Cuphead videos, so I figured this is where we're going to start with creating bosses. This boss has four equally weird looking phases, but I decided on creating the first phase. So in order to create this, we need a giant cube of foil. Using the hammer, I think I got it about as tightly packed as it's gonna be. It's not perfect, but it's good enough and I think it will work just fine. This is the main color of the outside of the saloon. We need to cut it into equally sized strips, and these are going to be the planks that surround the entire outside of the building. So let's throw those into the oven and then we can start gluing them on. While we do that, I want to give a quick explanation of why I haven't posted a video in almost three weeks. It all started with a terrible toothache and I actually had to get that tooth pulled. In the time of recovering from this, I tested positive for COVID and had a pretty rough time with that. But for the most part, I'm recovered from both of those things now, so we can get back to the weekly schedule of posting videos. Now that we're done with the building, you can see the aftermath here of the mess it made on my table. Thanks to my pasta machine, I got this extremely thin sheet of black clay, and this is what we're going to use to fill in the doors and windows. But first, we need to actually create the windows, so let's cut these squares out. I figured it would be easier to do this after I get it all assembled rather than try to size those pieces to have the windows. Let's take some of this tan clay and start working on the bottom and top. I gotta say, this is one of the weirdest things I've ever made with clay. I've never really created anything like this. At least later on, it starts to feel more like a character and less like a building. So again, let's take some super glue and start attaching everything together. And for the most part, it's just outlines and edges around all of the different pieces on this building. In the front, we have a nice little porch, and let's add in a railing going around the top of it. Now this next step is technically optional, but I knew that I would regret not doing it. This building has wheels, so I had to take the opportunity to see if I could actually make it roll. And it turns out you can. I've added in some wires into these little axles, and these will be what holds the wheels in place. I 3D printed this little cookie cutter, and it worked perfect for the size of these wheels. So now let's start working on the inside. We have to create some nice old wooden western wheels. And of course, we can't forget the hole in the center for the wire. This giant wheel is going to go on top of the building. And then here we have a couple extra details like the doors and the sign. Let's get the doors into place. We only need one set since the boss is going to be coming out of the top door. Let's get our wagon into the workshop so we can add on some wheels. At this point, I honestly had no idea whether this was going to work or not, but I was pleasantly surprised that it does. Maybe it's not the smoothest ride and the wheels do occasionally fall off, but it does actually roll. Now at this point, I want to give a huge shout out to another clay channel, Dazzling Rose Clay. She hand drew these wanted posters for me since I couldn't really get a very clear image from in the game. So go check out her channel, and if you like what you see, give her some support. Cutting out all of these individual letters is something I don't ever want to do again. On the top of the building, we have a little exhaust pipe, probably for a wood-burning stove or a furnace. And here's a little lantern that's going to be on the front. After baking, let's glue these different pieces into place. And in the hopes of creating every little detail on this boss, I even made this little metal ring to hold the lantern in place.
Now that the building is complete, we can move on to creating the boss. Which I honestly expected to have a tough time with, but it ended up going pretty smoothly. It's time to finally conquer my fear of creating hands, and create some giant cowboy gloves. I think the fact that these are so big made them a lot easier to learn the techniques of creating hands. Usually when I create such miniature things, it's almost impossible to create fingers. So it's just a matter of splitting the fingers apart, and making them nice and round using some tools. You could of course use your hands to make these hands, but I feel like I mess up the details a lot when I try to use my hands. Let's give the fingers a nice bend, and we can attach those onto the arms. It might look a little bit strange right now, but that's because we're gonna create some guns because this boss shoots out what I thought was ink, but apparently it's snake oil. Which does make sense because you can actually see a snake head in the oil that's flying at you. Let's add some handles onto these cannons. And here's another artwork done by Dazzling Rose Clay. And I forgot to mention earlier, I'm printing all of these on sticker paper, so I can just place them on there nice and easy and I don't have to use any glue. Let's get these guns into place, and we need to make sure that they actually work. Let's move on to the final detail creating the head. This is the foam cube that I was going to use before I learned that the super glue would just burn a hole right through it. So luckily it still has a use. It can hold my armature in place while I work on it. This was very difficult to create and it doesn't start to actually look like a cow until quite a ways in. It was at this point I realized I made an unsettling combination of hatless King DDD mixed with a chocolate Easter bunny. And I'm sorry to say, but you're still gonna have to look at it for a little while. I think the biggest problem here is that the nose isn't sticking out enough. So I threw this in the oven and added in another couple chunks on top of the nose. And I think that now it's looking a lot better. I still can't see it as anything but eyes and a mouth, so let's finish up the mouth so we can finally add in some eyes and stop looking at this creepy face. The eyes on Cuphead characters always look like a tiny little Pac-Man. Let's take some white clay and give this cow some horns. On the side we have some nice little floppy ears. And on the top we have this weird little pompadour style hair. Now I know I tried to make a cow, but I can't help think that it looks more like a horse. Let me know in the comments, did I create a horse or a cow? I've added some brown clay onto the neck and created this nice little red bandana. We can throw those into the oven, super glue them into place, and that is our final detail. So here it is, Esther Winchester from Cuphead, the delicious last course. I hope you all enjoyed the video, feel free to let me know in the comments which bosses you would like to see next, and I'll leave a playlist of all the Cuphead things I've created so far at the end of this video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.